Hello, welcome to the this uh, special edition of the Theology Podcast. It's uh, kind of special because I'm not joined today by my, my normal co-hosts, uh, Tom Price and Glenn Sunshine. Instead, I'm joined by Joe Rigney, and I'm glad to have a little time with him to talk about a conference that we're sponsoring at my church here in uh, the state of Washington. And uh, to kind of set it up, we're going to be uh, conducting this conference in September, the 9th and 10th, and the title of the conference is Welcome to Negative World. And Joe is one of the speakers. Joe is going to be joined by Aaron Wren and James Wood. And uh, we're really looking forward to having you, Joe. And what I thought would be good for us to do at this time is just give you an opportunity to, to let folks know a little bit about what you'll be addressing and then maybe help folks think about why they should come. So the first question is, uh, when it comes to the titles of your, of your talks, they're intriguing. One of them is Sexual Pharisees, and the other is The Three Worlds and the Tao. So uh, what's behind uh, those titles? So what inspired them? Yeah, so let's talk, start with the second there, uh, Three Worlds and the Tao. So the, the Three Worlds obviously is a reference to uh, Aaron Wren's work, um, which is where the, the whole event is coming from, about uh, positive world, neutral world, negative world. And uh, Ren's argument that we've moved from neutral world, positive world was when Christianity was a net plus, socially speaking. Um, everybody's Christian-ish, at least, and uh, and so forth. Uh, neutral world is when it's sort of ambivalent. People kind of maybe in, in certain places like major urban centers think you're a little bit weird for being a conservative Christian, but you're just weird. Uh, and then negative world is when now it's a it's a net minus. Um, people find out you're you're a conservative Christian, and they go, "Oh, one of those." And there's a kind of recoil, and uh, and maybe even a hostility. So that's that's Ren, and uh, and I think some of the pushback against against him has been, you know, Christ, Christianity's always lived in the negative world, back to Bible times, right? So the New Testament's written in a negative world. So this isn't really all that new, uh, and we shouldn't carve it up. Even even a hundred years ago, being a conservative Christian um, could be a matter of scorn and, and mockery. So part of what I, so then I'm taking that framework and I'm saying, well, the Tao, which is, I'm, I'm picking that term from C.S. Lewis and the abolition of man. And it's basically his way of talking about natural law, natural order, rational order of the universe. And, uh, and what I'm saying is, you know, the, the, the actual dividing line on a lot of these issues that we're facing, what makes this different is that a hundred years ago, you might be weird for being a Christian because you believe in a virgin birth and that Jesus rose from the dead. So it's sort of the supernatural, um, specially revealed aspects of Christianity that made you a weird and maybe a, you know, mockery or even hostility. That's different than when, um, there's a, um, when people are at war with the Tao and we live in a world where people are at war with the Tao. So I want to spend some time reflecting on that sort of dynamic and how framing sort of our cultural war or the movement from neutral to negative in light of natural law, in light of the Tao, and how that can help us think more clearly about what makes this moment in history a little bit unique. Yeah, that's great. Uh, I think that, that uh, you know, I'm looking forward to, to hearing you address that. Uh, but also this other topic, uh, sexual Pharisees, what's that about? Yeah, so where that one came from is, uh, you know, for years growing up, uh, you know, I would hear the sermons about, uh, usually drawn from, say, the prodigal son, about the ministry of Jesus and wanting to to engage with unbelievers the way Jesus did. And the kind of the standard narrative, I, I think uh, Tim Keller is a pretty good representative of this in, in a really good way, um, where there's sort of this, there's two ways to go wrong. And one is sort of the, the way of uh, immorality, um, so sexual immorality, drunkenness, that sort of side. And then there's the other way, the more subtle way, which is the religious route. Um, and so you could, you've got the tax collector and you've got the Pharisee, you've got the prostitute and you've got the self-righteous. And those are the two ways. And the prodigal son story is basically that, right? Here's the two, what both brothers we find out are actually lost. One of them just was lost at home. Uh, and, and that's all well and good. And as far as it goes, the, the challenge comes that those actually aren't the only two options. They may have been the main options in Jesus's day, right? So you've got the tax collectors and sinners, and then you've got the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. But in reality, there's a, there's a third option beyond those two, not just the gospel way, but there's a third option, which is you could take both of those and combine them. You could take the immorality of the prostitute, and you could take the high-handed rebellion of the Pharisee and the self-righteousness, and you could put them together. And what would that mean? And, and, and how should we speak to and about that, that reality? Um, because oftentimes the way that that two ways is used is to say, you know, Jesus was gentle 
um, with the tax collectors, the prostitutes, they flocked to him and he was real gentle with them. And then he was un, you know, blinkingly, um, harsh even with the Pharisees, you know, woe to you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. And so frequently Christians will use that sort of, um, uh, framing that, that categorization to say, Hey, we should be, uh, you know, to, to, you know, to bleed a little bit into James Woods territory, winsome to this group and not care about winsomeness with that group. And I want to kind of, uh, what's the word today? Problematize that frame <laughs> uh, right, right, right. by, uh, by, by exploring okay, this third option and what, what actually makes a, a Pharisee in sort of the biblical sense, not the historic group, but that, that quality that Jesus identifies in the Pharisees. What's, what's the uniqueness there? And, uh, and what do we make of the world that we live in? I think that's excellent. I think self-righteousness is a kind of characteristic of human nature. It's not right. just simply, you know, a problem that religious people, you know, deal with. <laughs> right. Anyway, this is great stuff. So if you'd like to be, uh, you know, if you'd like to learn more about this particular conference, a, a way to do that is going to our website and uh, you can learn about uh, more about Joe and about Aaron and about James and uh, get some information about, you know, the location and the dates and so forth. And you can even uh, sign up and and uh, register for the conference. Now, one of the things about the conference that I'm really pleased to see is that, of course, you are the president of Bethlehem Seminary and College, and uh, one of the supporting institutions of the conference is uh, Bethlehem. Can you tell us a little bit about Bethlehem? Yeah, uh, so we're a small uh, college and seminary here in the Twin Cities, uh, and we're a little bit unique uh, in a couple of different ways. Uh, we're intentionally small. So we have a student body currently of about 160, 170 students at both the graduate and undergraduate level. Um, we're church based, uh, now church is based. There's been a, you know, we've Bethlehem's planted a number of churches over the years. And so there's a, a wider array of churches that are now, uh, feeding and supporting, uh, this school. Um, uh, but really what makes us, uh, somewhat unique is our, is our, um, educational vision, which is, um, in this age of anxiety and turmoil, we're seeking to produce adults. We want, we, we're, we're aiming at, think of that. Think yeah, of that. Think, think of that. <laughs> Could we get a college that would aim at that? Um, and so we're aiming at Christian maturity, uh, which we sort of see as uh, clarity of mind, a stability of soul and a readiness to act um, rooted in um, serious joy. We call serious joy, which is our way of talking about um, pursuing our highest joy in God himself as the sort of ballast in our boat. And so we have, um, you know, college programs, we teach the great books in light of the greatest book for the sake of the great commission. And so you can hear in that sort of the liberal arts focus, a deep, rigorous, biblical, theological focus, and then a great commission, uh, nations focus. And that's kind of the, the package that we have at our college in terms of our content. And then our students come in, uh, as a cohort and they go through the program together. Um, there's three majors sort of at the end, but by and large, the program is, is uh, done together, which allows for a depth of engagement that you can't get when you're doing the choose your own adventure um, college thing that, that a lot of places do where the student just decides I'll have a little bit of this and a little bit of that. You have to, everything's got to be superficial and we want depth. We want, we want um, real education, real formation. Uh, and so we built a program to do that. And then at our seminary, we train uh, she- shepherds, uh, training shepherds to be shepherds. Uh, and so uh, it's in the context of a local church, um, with an apprenticeship, so academic rigor, but also a pastoral apprenticeship. And then maybe the last, the last thing I'll say um, is we've, we've tried to do it in a, in a model that's unusually affordable. And, and by unusual, I mean re- re- really unusual. Uh, we've kept our costs really low by partnering with the church. Um, our, our campus is the city, and, and this building I'm in right now is, is Bethlehem Baptist Church, uh, which means the cost to the, uh, for us to educate a student is $17,000. And then we've committed to raising uh, $10,000 of that for each student. Every student receives a $10,000 scholarship, which leaves the cost to them in tuition at $7,000 per year, which I know for, you know, maybe many of your listeners who do uh, say classical Christian schools, it's less than they often pay um, at some, at some school. And so we've tried to make it really affordable. Um, we, we get, we don't do the student loan shell game. We're not involved in any federal financial aid, so we can stay mission pure, uh, but that enables us to form students over four years and then launch them into life and marriage and ministry and adulthood without the burden of student loan debt. Uh, so if, if you're, we, we've, uh, yeah, we'd love to, if, if some of your listeners are looking for, for college, even, even now here in the summer, uh, we've still got a few spots available uh, in our programs and uh, be happy to do it or, or down the road, love for the folks to check us out. Yeah, that's great. Where, where do they go to check you out? What's yeah, uh, your, your address online? 
Yeah, our website is uh, www.bcs, so Bethlehem College Seminary, bcsmnminnesota.edu, bcsmn.edu. Great. Well, thanks for your time, Joe. Uh, Again, like I said, this is a real short little uh, kind of taster for folks out there in podcast land. And uh, if you'd like to be, uh, you know, learn more about, of course, obviously, uh, the school that Joe's connected to or the conference that we're going to be sponsoring, there are links in the show notes. And you can just follow those links and they'll take you to where you need to go. But uh, with regard to the conference, again, the, uh, the website for that is www.negworldconference.com. All right, Joe, uh, we'll see you in about a month and a half or a little more, I guess. Yeah, looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a great time. Yeah, yeah, it's super. All right. Thanks a lot, folks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.